How's it going, everybody? What's up? Brett Mix here, Macho Wrestling 101, here for another Nitro review. Uh, this is the 33rd Nitro. It's the 30th week they went up against Raw. This is April 29th, 1996. Nitro this week lost to Raw for the fourth straight time. Raw got a 2.9 in the ratings. Well, Nitro just, do just a, drew just a 2.1. So three through 30 weeks of the Monday Night War, Nitro has 14 wins, 14 losses, and two draws. Amazing that through 30 weeks of this Monday Night War, both Raw and Nitro have both won 14 times each and have tied twice. Nitro begins with Bischoff saying, this is where the action is live. It's the only place that you'll see live coming to you from the Albany Civic Center in Albany, Georgia. Uh, Giant and Flair for the title tonight, plus the tag team titles are on the line right away. It's Luger and Sting defending the titles against Harlem Heat, Booker T, and Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray and Booker T come out to a good ovation, but Sting comes out to a better one. Not so much for Luger, but he's with Sting, so you can't really tell. The tag titles are on the line as Nitro gets going. T starts out with Sting as they tie up as, as Sting does his woo! Sorry if I blew out the mic there. A uh, high thrust kick by Booker T to Sting as he ducks a potential clothesline. Sting undergoes a dodge and a leapfrog into a drop kick and an elbow from Luger. Double teaming Booker T is Lex and Sting. Lex double teams Stevie Ray, though, as he comes clobbing in with blows. Luger stomps someone in the corner. Luger vicious as he fights back against Stevie Ray. They double team Stevie Ray, do Luger and Sting. Uh, Stevie Ray tags in Booker T with a who hits a standing headlock to Sting. Shoulder tackle, then a drop kick, then a, a double axe handle. Bischoff cups the double sledges, double sledgehammers. Back from commercials, the titles are still on the line. Booker T hits a giant box slam. Stevie Ray tagged in, hits a snapmare to Sting and a reverse chin lock. Luger and Booker T get the tags, and Luger runs like crazy into Harlem Heat. In the end here, Jimmy throws in the towel, and Stevie Ray lifts up Jimmy as they... Jimmy Hart as they bring him in as Sting rolls up Booker T at the same time as Jimmy Hart's being messed with on the apron. So Sting rolls up Booker T and they get the victory to Sting and Luger at 10.45, retaining the tag team titles. Pretty good match here. I give it two and a half stars in the, va in the victory over Harlem Heat to retain the tag titles. Next up, another tag match. It's Fire and Ice, who are Ice Train and Scott Norton against the Steiners. Rick and Scott. Steiners get a great ovation. Ice Tree and Rick Steiner, Ice T and Rick Steiner begin as they tie up. A clean break in the corner as Rick backs off. Both guys are power wrestlers. A shoulder tackle and a leapfrog as Ice Tree and Train delivers a big running chest slam. And then Rick from behind hits a German suplex. Scott Steiner tagged in and Norton in with him. Two future NWO members going at it. Steiner with a gut wrench suplex. Then a belly to belly overhead suplex by Scott Steiner. Awesome power wrestling with these power wrestlers. Scott Norton, as I mentioned, a future NWO member. You can tell I'm looking forward to getting those episodes soon enough, soon enough. Scott Steiner goes for another gut wrench on Ice Train, but Rick Steiner gets Ice Train down from behind, and the Steiners win as Rick hits a Steiner line to Ice Train. Steiners win at 325. I gave it two stars and a quarter as it was quality over quantity. Flair joins Mean Gene Oakland and goes, Mean by God, Gene. Woo! I can't really do Ric Flair, but that's what he says. And he's saying, I got Mrs. Macho Man. So I do the voice more I can't that I can't do. Um, he says, I got Miss, Mrs. Macho Man by his side. And Giant isn't half the man he is, says Nancy Benoit. And, uh, well, she's still Nancy Sullivan, I think, back then. And I, I think it's disrespectful to call her Nancy Benoit, really. Um, but that's who she is. I think she was Nancy Sullivan at the time. Lord Stephen Regal versus Belfast Bruiser in a parking lot brawl. The Belfast Bruiser kicks at Regal as he leaves in, in the glass. Finley with a cement block, a cinder block. Regal then a thumb to the eye as, he, as Finley had concrete. He dropped the concrete. Regal and Finley exchange rights. This is a parking lot brawl. Lord Stephen Regal hits with a, hits him with a bumper as he Irish whipped him into the car. And then the bumper fell off and he hit him with the bumper. Finally slammed onto a truck is Regal by the Belfast Bruiser. And then elbowed near fall. This is the referee counted on the hood. The Belfast Bruiser is choking out Regal with a safety belt in one of the vehicles. Finley drops Regal on the top guardrail. They went into the back of a truck and Regal got on the roof, caving in. Glass 
glass pumpers, hood caved in, safety belts, cinder blocks. The Belfast Rouger threw Regal into hard glass again, and it shattered. Both guys continued to wrestle, and the glass window was shattered again. Regal then, with the bumper, is knocked back down to the elbow drop. Uh, and a back body drop by the Belfast Bruiser to Regal onto the hood of a truck. Almost a pile driver on concrete, but Regal gets up a two and a uh, back body drop on the roof of the car. Finley hit with a low blow. Regal then pile drives him onto the car and gets the three count at 613. Violent and fun, so I gave it three stars. Next up, we got the Giant with Jimmy Hart versus Ric Flair, the world's heavyweight champion, with Elizabeth and Woman for the world heavyweight championship. Ric Flair came in the ring and begged the Giant, no, 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 no. Giant stalks him slowly. Flick chop, Flair chops away at the Giant, and then he charges the corner, but Flair moves. Giant then hits a standing vertical suplex. Flair then dropped the Giant with Nux as he grabbed something from his tights, and uh, he drops the Giant, and the referee is figuring out what did he do because the Giant seems to be knocked out. Flair then denies any wrongdoing. Flair off the ropes, does a little bit of a strut, and then goes for a figure four. The biggest figure four you'll ever see on the legs of the Giant. Uh, he got it in on him, but then the Giant sits up out of nowhere and chokes Ric Flair. They get to a standing position, and Giant hits a choke slam to become the world champion at 549. So a choke slam out of the figure four, and we got a new world heavyweight champion on Nitro. The Giant defeats Ric Flair, ending his 13th reign as champion. Giant has two world title wins over Hogan and Flair in his rookie year. Not a bad start by the Giant to have two the world title wins in your rookie year over Hogan and Flair. Not bad. I gave the start the match rating a star of three quarters. The show ends with Bischoff, Pepe, with Steve McMichael and Bobby Heenan talking about the show that was. Uh, next week they 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 pump soup uh, slamboree about the lethal battle bowl. And the Lethal Lottery, uh, two people will tag team, and they don't have to be partners, but they t they go at it at Super Bowl. Then it gets to eight men in a battle royal, and the winner of that is the number one contender and faces the world champion. So this is week 29 of the wars. Uh, Nitro lost this week. Two, they got 2.7 in the ratings. Raw got a 3.3. So now the ratings to the first 30 weeks are 14 wins for Nitro, 14 wins for Raw, two draws. So both Raw and Nitro, WWF and WCW collectively are both 14, 14, and 2. If it's the win, draw, win, loss, draw column. Win, loss, draw. 14 wins, 14 losses, two draws. 30 weeks and neither side has the advantage. It's pretty unbelievable. Even though this was the fourth Raw win in a row. Quality rating wise, I give this a 6 out of 10 because... Because of the the parking lot brawl, took up the bulk of the rating. Harlem Heat match with Leo and Sting was decent. A new world champion in the Giant, you don't see that very often. The other tag match with uh, Fire and Ice and the Steiners was decent at best. So the quality rating, I get things 6 out of 10 is fair. Uh, the parking lot brawl was intriguing, if nothing else. Thank you for so much for everyone following these Monday Night Wars. I can't tell you how fun they are, and I can't tell you how fun they're going to be when the Attitude Era comes. I'll be doing a, when these shows switch to two hours, I'll be doing a different kind of review where I review the matches a lot quicker and then go into the stories a bit more. But they're always going to be under 10 minutes. I have to do that for the graphic image uh, that I put on the site. It needs to, uh, videos under 10 minutes. So even when the shows are two hours, I'm still going to cut them to under 10 minutes. So I'll be only labeling the most important things and any side things I think that are interesting that I think that you guys might like to hear that you wouldn't normally get when you watch the show. I like to come back with that kind of info. So anyways, that's the draw, the Nitro Raw. <laughs> That's the Nitro rating. I gave a 6 out of 10 for the reasons I just mentioned. Both Raw and Nitro, again, are 14, 14, and 2 through the 30 weeks of the Monday Night War. This is the 33rd Nitro episode, but the 30th I reviewed because I only review Nitro and Raw when they're in the same week. Like and subscribe on my channel if you've been following along. If you haven't been following along, either way, you can watch the Monday Night Wars anytime because I got these Nitros and Raws archived in their own specific folder. Plus, I always put them out when they go head to head so you see raw right next to the nitro so you always know what segment went up against what segment 
you have that uh, luxury because that's why I post them both side by side. I'm Brett Mix. Thank you for watching this Nitro review. We'll see you on the next 31st week of the Nitro and Raw Monday Night Reviews. Brett Mix, and I'm out.